Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. We're going to do some Bible teaching um, this afternoon and hope it's going to be a blessing to you. Uh, so let's come before the Lord. Uh, we're looking at uh, a message today called You Must Be Born Again. Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your grace and love. And Father, we pray that you bless this message to our hearts. To those who hear your word, I pray that you would speak to them through your Holy Spirit and through your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Many people today say, Jason, I, or have said to me, Jay, I don't want to believe at the moment. I want to enjoy my life and have a good time. And then maybe in years to come, I'll come back and think about the Christian faith. But you know, you don't know whether you're going to have a long life. You might die next week, you might die tonight. So you need to know that you're right with God today. Many young people think that religion uh, will stop them enjoying life. But religion will not stop you enjoying life. It will enhance your life much more. You see, Christianity is about loving Christ more than anything else in the world. If we turn to Matthew 13, I'm, I'm reading from the... Um, from the uh, American Standard Version. So let, let's turn to uh, Matthew 13. Forty-five. We read again: the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls, and upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. You see, he found a great pearl and he sold everything he had so he could buy the great pearl. And, you know, Jesus is that great pearl. He's the pearl that's worth more than anything else in the world. And if you want to know God, you've got to be willing to give up everything for Jesus Christ. He's worth it. He's worth it. So what are you going to do? Are you going to value Jesus Christ the great pearl or not well one man a religious leader Nicodemus wanted to know the pearl of great price Jesus Christ so let's turn to John chapter 3 John chapter 3 oh, sorry uh, John 3 John 3 verse 1 it says now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews so Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews and he said this man came to Jesus by night and said to him Rabbi we know that you have come from God as a teacher for no one can do the signs these signs that you do unless God is with him so Nicodemus was a Pharisee he, he was a man who knew the Old Testament. He was a religious man and he came to see Jesus at night. But he came to see Jesus at night. You see, he was afraid of what other people thought of him. And there are many today who are, are interested in Jesus, but they're afraid to ask questions because if they ask questions at school or college, people might laugh at them. But you know something? Nicodemus was brave. He did go out of his way to find out about Jesus. And maybe you need to be brave in your school, in your college, in university, or in your life, in your workplace, and say, you know, I'm going to ask questions about Jesus. I'm interested in this person. Nicodemus was a, relig was a religious person. But, you know, his religion was no good to him. He came to Jesus at night as a religious person, but his religion was no help to him at all. If we turn to Matthew 15, 7. I scratch my head, forgive me. I've got sunburn all over my, my head. Uh, evangelizing through the day, I've got sunburn. Uh, Matthew 15, 7 says, You hypocrites, rightly do Isaiah prophesy of you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. 
but in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine the precepts of men. And what that passage is saying is the Pharisees and the Jewish people of the time were setting up religious practices that were nothing to do with God, nothing to do with His Word, but they were their own ideas. And you know, many people today have their own ideas, they set up religious practices, but they are nothing to do with what God wants. You see, what God wants, most of all, is that you trust in Jesus Christ. In Philippians 3, 4 and 7, Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 and 7, it says, Although I am confident in the flesh, though I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, if anyone else has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more. Circumcised on the eighth day, this is Paul saying he was religious, of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to the righteousness which is in the law, found blameless. But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. So Paul is saying, look, I was a Pharisee. I was religious. I had it all together religiously, but he counts it all nothing compared to Christ. And you know, if religion is putting you off knowing about Christianity, then you need to know that Christianity is not about religion. I was uh, in Stockton a, few, a week ago and I was walking the streets with a friend of mine and we bumped into a, a guy who was drunk and we were talking to him and I told him we were pre I was preaching in the church just up the road and then he didn't want to talk, he said oh don't bother me with religion and my friend said but Christianity is not religion and the drunk said it is religion but the drunk was wrong, Christianity is not about religion Christianity is about a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about, my friends. And if religion has put you off, you need to realize that religion is not at the heart of Christianity. The heart of Christianity is Jesus Christ and a relationship with God through Him. Okay? Secondly, Nicodemus, put that there, Nicodemus was seeking. You know, if you want something badly, you'll go and seek it out. Nicodemus wanted to know God badly. He wanted to have a closer relationship with God. And so he seek, sought, sought the Lord at night. And I have to ask, are you really seeking? You see, you're never going to find God. You're never going to find God in a relationship with Him if you're not really seeking Him. It's not good being blasé or saying, well, I'll, I'll think about it tomorrow, I'll think about it next week, or I'll think about it in a year's time. It's no good just being neither e here or there, because you'll never ever find God that way. The only way that you're going to find God as a reality in your life if you, is, you that, is you begin to seek Him with all your heart. Hebrews chapter 11, 6 says, if we, if we see, uh, if we go to John 3 verse 2, it says, this man came to Jesus by night. So Nicodemus is seeking Jesus. Okay, let's go to Hebrews 11:6. Hebrews 11:6. He says, "And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him." So, he's saying there, you know, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Okay? So what that means is, if you're seeking to know God, you've got to have faith in God. He said, but Jay, prove to me there is a God, and I'll believe. Listen, you know there is a God. Deep down in your heart, you know there's a God. You know what right and wrong is. Where did right and wrong come from? You know there is a God when you look at nature. You know that this could not have happened by chance. So you know deep down there is a God. And you've got to believe that God will speak to you, that God will come into your life. But you've got to be willing to believe and to seek Him with all your heart. Thirdly, Nicodemus was challenged in John chapter 3, verse 3 to 8. It says, 
Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless he is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born as he is. Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes from or where it's going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Lord said, you must be born again. Nicodemus was a religious man and then he was suddenly told you must be born again the Greek word for born again means born from above it means the Holy Spirit coming into your heart like water into a glass and changing you making you more loving joyful and peaceful and you know Nicodemus whole thinking about religion about Christ, about life everything was totally challenged because it was not something he had thought of and you know Christianity is a supernatural religion and it will blow your mind if you allow the Word of God to speak to you you need to be born again now that is beyond rationalism it's beyond atheism it's beyond religion it's beyond science it's beyond philosophy when we say you must be born again it's heaven coming down to earth it's the Holy Spirit coming down into your heart it's the Holy Spirit coming into you and dwelling in you giving you new life new vision new hope and then the Holy Spirit then opens up to you the meaning of the Bible the meaning of spiritual things you cannot climb to heaven on rationalism you cannot climb to heaven on science on philosophy on religion no you cannot climb to heaven instead God climbs down to you by his Holy Spirit coming down and dwelling in your heart and if you really want to know God you've got to do it God's way and God's way is that you don't get into heaven by your brains you don't get into heaven by your science you don't get into heaven by your philosophy you get into heaven by the gift of the Holy Spirit and you need the Holy Spirit in your life then your rationalism will, will be real rationalism then your science will be real science then your philosophy will be real philosophy the Holy Spirit brought life upon the dead rocks of matter at the beginning of creation and the Holy Spirit brought life and a, crea a new world through dead matter through bits of rock but it said the Holy Spirit brewed upon, brooded upon the face of the waters and made life and, and the world that we see today and your heart is like that dead rock and the watery waste and, and God wants to bring peace and hope and joy and life into you and it's by the Holy Spirit he wants to renew your mind he wants to renew your the philosophy he wants to renew your scientific understanding he wants to renew your religious understanding and it's renewed in the Holy Spirit today let's turn to John chapter 1 12 to 13 John chapter 1 12 and 13 It says, But as many as received into them, he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believed in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Born of God. It's God who comes into the soul of man and men and women and breathes new life. It's this that you need today. It's this that will challenge you. It's this that challenged Nicodemus. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 to 15 excuse me 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10 uh, chapter 2 sorry 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 to 15 says for to us God revealed them through the Spirit for the Spirit searches all things even the depths of God for who among men knows the thoughts of man except the Spirit of man which is in him even so the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God now we 
have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit of him who is from God so that we may know, may know the things freely given to us we have received the spirit of God so that we may know and the Holy Spirit is the one that helps us to know whether these things are true Ezekiel 36 25 Ezekiel 36 25 27 Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a spirit of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and my ordinances. You said, Jay, I've got a hard heart against God. I'm bitter against God. I'm angry against God. I'm confused against God. Jay, whichever way you look at it, Jay, I ain't for God. I can't love him. I've got a hard heart towards him. And I want to tell you that you can love him because he will come into your heart and give you a new heart. A new heart to love him. A new heart that will take away your bitterness. A new heart that will take away your confusion. The Holy Spirit will come and give you a new heart. But the question is, are you going to let him come into your heart and give you that new heart? Are you going to do that? Or are you going to continue to resist him like you've always done? Are you going to continue to try and think things through and be rational like you've always done? Are you continue going to be proud like you've always done? Are you going to continue to go for the life of sin and the life of the way that you've wanted to live? Are you going to continue to do that? Or are you going to continue now to listen to the Holy Spirit, to receive the Holy Spirit and let him come into your life and give you a new heart? Nicodemus was challenged. Are we challenged today by the Holy Spirit? Number four, Nicodemus was loved. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God gave his only begotten Son. You said, Jay, I don't know if God loves me. I don't know whether God wants me. The answer is he does because he died on the cross for you. He sent his son to die in your place. When Christ died in your place, he was taking your judgment, your wrath. You deserve the wrath. You deserve the judgment. You deserve to go to hell. Instead, Jesus took your place. Jesus stepped in your place. There's the story of the woodcutter. And one day, one day, um, a hundred and so many years ago there was this village and there was a fire in a house and everybody was out working and everybody rushed back to the village and they found a baby in the middle of the village street just in a, in a safe distance from the burning cottage and everybody wondered who saved the baby and one day in the in the hall uh, the council hall of the village Everybody was arguing who saved the baby and the guy came with a cloak over his head and he pulled the cloak over and he lifted the cloak and all his arms were, were scorched and burned in his face. He said, I saved the baby. You know, he suffered in order to save the baby. And that's what God did for you. He suffered at the cross so that you might live. Romans 5.8 Romans 5 8 it says but God demonstrates his own love to us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us God has demonstrated his love to you by sending his son to die for you Rome at uh, John 15 13 15 13 says Greater love of no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. There is no greater love than to lay down your life for your friends. And Christ laid his life down for you, my friend. And that means you're his friend. But the question is, what are you going to do? Are you going to look at this salvation that Christ has given you, where he died on the cross for you? 
Are you going to look at it with contempt and reject it? Or are you going to see the love of God for you at the cross, where he sent his son to die in your place as a substitute for you? What are you going to do today? Uh, finally and fifthly, Nicodemus was warned, John 3:18. He says, He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed the name of the one and only Son of God. The Word of God is saying, look, if you do not believe in my Son, you are judged. You know, my friends, people say, well, why is there a hell? Why do people go to hell? There is a hell, and people go to hell because people simply reject Jesus. They reject His Word. You say, well, what about all the people of the past who haven't heard about Jesus? Well, we leave them in God's hands. The fact of the matter is, you've heard of Jesus. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to believe or are you going to reject it? If you reject this message, the Word of God solemnly warns you, there is a hell and you will go to hell if you reject the message. So please don't reject the message. Scripture warns of a hell. Matthew 3, 7. Now you said, Jay, I don't believe in hell. It seems illogical. It seems unjust. Well, I believe the Word of God, and that is the key. And the Word of God clearly states there is a hell. I put all my trust upon that Word, and the Word of God will not fail. Matthew 3, 7 But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? That's John the Baptist. Flee from the wrath to come. Ephesians 5, 5. Ephesians 5, 5. Well, this is... You know with certainty that no immoral or impure person or covetous man who is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, but because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. There is, whether you like it or not, a wrath of God. There is a wrath of God. The only way out of the wrath of God is to come under the blood of Jesus Christ. Because under the blood of Jesus Christ you can find forgiveness. And when you fail you can come back and ask for forgiveness. But if you have not the blood of Christ then you are going to be under the wrath of God. Because God cannot look upon sin. And he must judge sin. He must judge it. But when you're a child of God, when you are his child, then you are his child. And even if you stray and you come back and say, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned that because you are his child, he will forgive you. But if you can't claim sonship, if you can't claim the blood of Christ, then you have no refuge under the wrath of God. You have no hope under the wrath of God. And you will go to hell. And you will go to hell. And you will be judged. Because God cannot look upon sin. He cannot look upon it. And he hates it. And if you want to walk in the ways of sin. He has to judge. But if you trust in Christ. He sees not you but Christ in his purity. And his holiness. And in him you are clean. Oh, please, please flee to the blood of Christ and get your sins forgiven. Get your sins washed in the blood of Christ, please. There is a hell. Go and study Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, Matthew chapter 13, 42 and onwards. In the end, when Jesus died, Nicodemus who was sceptical, came to bury Jesus' body 
in John chapter 19, 39, 42. So Nicodemus became a follower of Christ. You see, he sought the Lord. He came at night with his religion, but realized his religion was not enough. And then the Lord blew him away with, you must be born again, and Nicodemus was dumbfounded by this new teaching. But in the end, the teaching took root in Nicodemus' life, and when Jesus was crucified, Nicodemus was there burying Jesus with Joseph of Arimathea. But Nicodemus had come to know the Lord. But what about you? Let's turn to 1 Peter 1.23. 1 Peter 1.23. One Peter one twenty three. One Peter one twenty three. It says, For you have been born again not of seed which is perishable but imperishable, that is through the living and enduring word of God. You've been born again by the seed of the Word of God. Are you gonna Allow this message to impact your life today. Please, please come to know the Lord today. I'm going to close in prayer. As I say this prayer, you can say it in your heart. And if you say it in your heart, then the Lord will hear that prayer and you will become a, a child of God. Will you do that today? Let's come before the Lord. Pray this prayer. And then if you need encouraging, just find my sites, Swima 100, Samuel Swima Theological Seminary on the main channel, uh, on the main website is Samuel Swima Theological Seminary. I have Athanasius TV, Piccadilly Gardens Community Church on YouTube. There are blogs uh, by Samuel Swima Theological Seminary. There are many, many links to good ministries. Go to those sites, get encouraged, get blessed. You can get me on Facebook, Jason Burns and Samuel Zwima Theological Seminary on Facebook. These are places where you'll be able to hear my Bible teaching and uh, see my ministry as I minister the Word of God over the, over the next few years. So let's come before the Lord and let's ask His blessing and I just pray as I pray this prayer, may it be your prayer today. Dear Father, I acknowledge that I've tried to be clever, I've tried to walk my, in my own way with my own sin. And Lord, I confess all my sin today. I realize I need to be born again. I realize you died at the cross for me. And I realize that I need you. Lord, help me to turn away from my sin. Help me to believe in you. And I give you my life unreservedly today. As I do this, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit may come and dwell in my heart. And I ask this, Father, in his name and for your glory. Amen. Now, as you pray that prayer, the prayer doesn't save you. But God will hear that prayer and he will come and meet with you. And if you keep looking to him and trusting in Jesus, you know, the moment you believe in him is the moment... You've come to know the Lord as your Saviour. And He will change you and come into your life and guide you now. Okay? So I'll put uh, some re a resource under this video to help you as a young Christian. And I pray that you will find a church that will help you uh, to grow and to be biblical. If, you want, if you're in Manchester, come down to uh, Piccadilly Gardens Community Church. Uh, it's only a few of us. But if you want some Bible study, uh, we meet on a Friday night at 6.30 at uh, the food court in Arndale. You go up the escalator on Market Street. We also meet there on a Sunday morning at 11 p.m. at 11 a.m. Um, at the Manchester food court under in the Arndale. Arndale food court. Just go on Market Street up the escalator. You see a big round food court there. And also there's a, a, a communion service here at 5.30 at this house. And um, if you like to come here, 
um, just let me know and I will uh, get in touch with you uh, about that okay and give you the details if you're not in Manchester then uh, and you haven't got a church let me you know if you can't find a church let me know and I'll try and get in touch with a local pastor in your area and try to introduce them to you to uh, shepherd you and encourage you okay so thank you for listening and God bless you and please pray for me pray that I grow in the knowledge of God that I grow as a servant of God and please keep upholding me in prayer thank you very much and take care